hey you guys welcome back to my ministry whatever platform you're watching this on welcome back so i'm gonna start off with i had a vision and in this vision i was working out y'all in luke 9 verse 62 and this is Jesus telling us what it costs to be his disciple, right? What it costs to follow him. So Luke 9 and 62 says, Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So what stood out to me in that was obviously the word fit. And we're going to go to the definition of that. And the definition of the word fit means to be of a suitable quality, standard, or type to meet the required purpose. And so I have really been in a space to where God has been stretching me. Um, you haven't been seeing me pose. You haven't been seeing a lot of stuff in me that I was doing at a at a at a fast pace in the past few months because when i say god has been stretching me god has been stretching me when god says he wants to give you increase and expansion it's not just the physical blessings you have to become a person that's going to be able to obtain and maintain what god is giving you so when i say god has been stretching me god has been stretching me in my speech god has been stretching me in my mindset god has been stretching me in my desires god has been stretching me in my purpose and what it requires of me in order to follow him right as we go different seasons as we grow through different seasons god requires different things of us and i found myself in a space to where it's like god you've been good to me and i honor you and i am very grateful for what you've done for me but i want more and god has really been showing me okay it's nothing wrong with wanting more because i have more to give you but are are you somebody who is receptive to what i want to give you this scripture really hit me in my chest because god reminded me of like someone who is a weight trainer or someone who exercises regularly regularly a lot of people want to obtain the goals of working out we want the big muscles we want the nice abs we want the nice glutes right but do you know that working out is not just physical the physical results is just a physical manifestation of what had to take place mentally spiritually and emotionally before that progress that work could show up and be manifested physically when you're going to the gym if you're somebody who works out a lot you understand that it's not just about showing up physically because once you leave physically are you eating healthy are you setting standards for yourself mentally are you pouring into yourself mentally things and putting yourself in position that's going to edify your body not just for your physical results but it all happens in the mind because when you get to the gym y'all that's something where you have to push yourself mentally nobody is there to coach you and even if they are you have to take control of your own body and it starts in the mind because the first thing that happens when you begin to work out is your mind tells you you can't anymore because your body begins to shut you down so i say all of this to say that serving god and seeking his kingdom and seeking to do his will you have to be somebody who can be progressive in your work for purpose right you got to be somebody who can not only be stretched and you can obtain results physically but can God change your mind? Can God renew your mind? Can God renew your heart? If God is going to transition you, like he can't transition you without transitioning you. So sometimes we have to stop and say, okay, God, change me before you change my circumstances. Not changing your circumstances is because you haven't changed. But that all goes back to no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. It's a different perspective for me because this is Jesus talking about the cost of following him. And so I'm like okay god this is kind of like a far off revelation but then god reminded me okay as the disciples neared the end of their following jesus he then told them go and teach all that i've taught you to others go and do for others in the presence of others all that i've done in the presence of you and so they went from being students to teachers but there had to be a shift when jesus died and he resurrected there was a shift there was a pause when the disciples were just they were just at a halt and they were waiting there was a shift in what they were and what they were about to walk into so god had to take them literally from one season to another season but they had to be transformed and so god is saying if you're not willing to let go of the past whether that be mentally physically spiritually or emotionally you're not going to be fit for the kingdom and that can also show up in your own self in your own speech in your own actions in your own verbiage and what you want and things like that god is a progressive god and so if you find yourself in a position to where you're not progressing physically it's because you're not progressing as a person and so you got to start asking yourself 
am I in good spiritual condition? And I don't mean like, can I pray all day? Because we can pray all day, but what does it matter if we're praying all day, but we're not physically showing improvement, but there's no physical fruit. We're not bearing any fruit of what we're currently experiencing spiritually. So then God began to show me, okay, you you have a certain, you have this down to a certain degree. Now it's time for you to bear fruit. Now it's time for you to begin to show what's been going on, but you can't show what's been going on if you have not begun to find a consistent routine with who I've called you to be. And so I just want to say that the cost of following Jesus demands us to be fit for this purpose. And maybe this is not something that you wanted to hear or thought I was going to correlate with this specific scripture. But at the end of the day, the work of the Lord is very heavy. That's why scripture said harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's easy to change yourself in order to be used by God. Because I'm the first person to say, Lord, this is too much for me. But it's because God is growing you. He is stretching you. He is literally expanding you. And it doesn't feel good. So I've been in a space where it felt like I've been being crushed. But in reality, God was magnifying me for who he was calling me to be. So we got to be willing to say, if this is what it takes, to follow Jesus, I got to be willing to look forward and not look back. I know that you haven't, you've never seen, you, you've you never really obtained this level of growth before. You've never really obtained this level of consistency. You've never really obtained this level of discipline. You've never really obtained this level of self-control, whatever your story is. But God is saying, no one who looks back is fit for the service of the kingdom. So God is saying it ain't even about looking back physically, going back to your old ways, going back to your old mind, going back to your old habits, going back to the things that are of natural origin to where you've come from in your family. That's why God told Abraham, get thee out of the father's house, out of your kindred's house. And it ain't about him being physically in that house, but God had to remove him from what was normal to him, from what was normal to a generation that came before him. And God had to take him to a different land that was far off from where he came from because God was doing a new thing and God wants to do a new thing in you. But sometimes we're still bound to the things that we came from. Yeah, I came from poverty. I came from not knowing how to talk to people. I came from not knowing how to communicate. I came from dysfunctional relationships, but God is, God is saying, I want to do a new thing in you because I have a kingdom assignment attached to you, but we got to go forward. Y'all it's good, but this work is hard. <laughs> so to anybody who need this word of encouragement, all I can say is keep pushing the plow. No discipline at the time seems pleasant, but when you're done, you're, you're going to reap a harvest. You're going to be able to look back and say, that's why God had me doing that. That's why God kept me in isolation. So even if you don't see the results right then and there, y'all keep pushing the plow. If you got to take baby steps, take baby steps. If you got to stop and breathe for a second, do what you got to do because this is a marathon, not a race. You got to walk it out. Okay. 